Okay, let's get underway here. Our four and O's about to face off against each other. Ooh, corpse appraiser. I do love that one. And it looks like Julian has won the die roll here, taking a look at the opening hand, and it looks very nice. Yeah, solid openers for, for both players. Nathan with the classic, you know, turn to Blood Tithe Harvester into Fable of the Mirror Breaker. And both of those threats, it's it's just such a pain to deal with because even if you kill it, there's still something that's left behind, right? That's right. So here it is, Blood Tithe Harvester. Now Make Disappear could take care of it. There's also a Strangle sitting over there for Julian, but the result will be similar in that, uh, as you mentioned, there'll be a blood token left over regardless. Right, Julian might be considering the possibility of a turn three Fable of the Mirror Breaker, which is a much more annoying threat that you want to counter. So he could let this Blood Tithe Harvester resolve, untap, cast Strangle, and still leave up Make Disappear for, for that potential turn three Fable. And it does look like the decision that Julian's made here. So there's the blood token and pass turn back here from Nathan Stoyer. Julian rips an island. Allows him to cast a cemetery illuminator after getting this harvester off the battlefield. Could also maybe try to get a little bit greedy here, right? We can just pass, play the land. And if Nathan does in fact run out Fable of the Mirror Breaker, boom. Elder Dragon War, wipe both creatures off the battlefield. It's got to be tempting, and you can tell that Julian's at least considering that as an option. I mean, leaving a Blood Tithe Harvester on the battlefield isn't game over. Generally speaking, in standard, you need to kind of go blow for blow. You need to answer everything your opponent does. So you'll see the opponents take that, or the players, excuse me, take that as their baseline approach. But, you know, going back to basics, your life total is a resource. Yeah, I mean, Julian just... Going over all the different different options, what's the most likely thing that Nathan can play next, uh, next turn? And if you think about it, it's Blood Tithe Harvester, Fable of the Mirror Breaker, and a Corpse Appraiser that he likely won't run out unless he absolutely has to because there are no creatures in the graveyard. Okay, well, there's Cemetery Illuminator hitting the battlefield, and this will potentially give Nathan something to do with yep. that Harvester. Yeah, keep in mind that the Elder Dragon War deals two damage, so the Illuminator would survive. So curious, if you're Nathan's side, do you want to just get this Illuminator off the battlefield? Do you just go Blood Tithe Harvester, Xander's Lounge, and then sack the Harvester that you have in play to get Illuminator off the battlefield? Could be something to consider. Now keep in mind, the Elder, Elder Dragon War is not a card that Julian has a ton of copies of in the main, so it might just be something where Nathan chooses not to try to play around. One copy, but he has it. He's going to get him. He drew it, and he's going to get him. Ugh. Yeah, Nathan Stoyer yeah. has to kind of grimace at that a little bit. It is a one of, but uh, does plenty here. And now the Cemetery Illuminator gets to start gobbling up stuff from the yard and uh, perhaps even providing some value to Julian. You can see, if you look in the upper left part of your screen, you can see Julian Wellman's library there. That's revealed to him thanks to the Cemetery Illuminator. A little bit of extra information for him and, and for us as well. Yeah, make this appear on top here. Now remember, he does get to cast any creatures on top. He gets to play one creature on top, given that the Illuminator has exiled the Blood Tithe Harvester here. Now Nathan gets to run out a Shieldred here. Gets, gets to avoid counter magic, but again, Julian again, taking that initial mono blue shell and adding red and choosing to play multiple copies of Rending Flame, right? This is a this is one of the ways when you're playing blue red to actually be able to deal five damage at instant speed and kill something. Right. And that is certainly relevant in a format where Shieldred is a staple. Okay, here comes Shieldred the Apocalypse. Proved itself to be one of the best cards in standard. And, and a card that definitely demands an answer. Now, Julian, you know, so if you if you watch, you might be thinking, okay, well, this is just an easy rending flame. But you have to consider Nathan's top end threat here is Invoke Despair, right? So you have to be afraid that that is a possibility. If Nathan resolves Invoke Despair next turn, Elder Dragon War and Cemetery Illuminator go to the graveyard next turn. That's huge, too, because getting that Elder Dragon War before it becomes a 4-4 Leaves Julian Wellman without anything on the battlefield. Yeah, and so that's why Julian 
already has two cards chosen to discard to the Elden Dragon War. Haughty Jin is great, but at the same time, it's really important for Julian to draw land number five here to keep up Make Disappear for that potential Invoke Despair. And has he done so? Yes, he has. Stormcarve Coast off the top there. Ooh. You don't see it on Julian's face, but that was a sigh of relief inside for sure. Right. All right, the Illuminator's going to come in once again. Still creature. And there's a Fable for Nathan Stoyer as well. And with two mana up, I think you're, you might just see Nathan go ahead, especially because he drew the Fable here. Just go with two plays because he knows that Julian has multiple copies of Make Disappear and Negate in his main deck. Yeah, pretty clean here. If you go for Fable of the Mirror Breaker, you can play around Make Disappear. And then if you choose, you can throw the Blood Tithe, Blood Tithe Harvester and say, if you want to counter this, then right. have at you. Yeah, but this is tough now. I mean, Nathan is going to have to deal with a 4-4 Dragon, yeah. the Illuminator that continues, that can potentially give Julian a little more value. Nathan also has the option of leaving up his own copy of Make Disappear rather than running the Harvester in. And it looks like that's what he's going to opt for here. Yeah. Could sacrifice the 2-2, so you basically have, you basically can just counter whatever Julian plays here. Right. But I mean, Nathan's down to 11, right? Yeah. Down to 11, and there's six power in the skies here. I can do that, Matt. That, that Nathan is facing facing off against. However, Nathan does have a Blood Tithe Harvester in hand, right? That Reflection of Kiki Jiki will be active next turn. So you could use that as kind of a way to generate uh, your, your generate just a way to just kill a creature every single turn. Okay, Illuminator gets in, but, down to nine falls Nathan. But I don't, but I don't see how, I mean, it's gonna be really difficult here for Nathan to, to fight through all of this here. Yeah, he's trying to kill everything. He can make sure this Hot Agent doesn't resolve. Okay, and I think, that, so now Julian can't even fight it. We'll just let this resolve, but still has six power in the air and has access to this Make Disappear for that potential Invoke Despair. Does have the ability to shore up and protect the dragon at least for one turn, right? Because right? Nathan's line next turn could very well be Blood Tithe Harvester into try to kill your dragon. Right, we have Reflection of Kiki Jiki on the battlefield here for Nathan's story as well. We know that that can really open it up. Wow, to that's, rest off that's, the top. That's a really interesting draw. Now Nathan, you know, if you, if you discard Harvester and draw a land, could maybe go duress into invoke yeah i think he just feels like he he likes everything he sees here the harvester with the reflection is a way he right. can get back or just resolving invoke to spare so now you can take the shore up you can take the shore up and play blood tired Har harvester which would not get countered right right and then you can start and then you take six go to three right it's getting sketchy here it's, yeah yeah Now, if you go with the Make Disappear, and then you play the Blood Tithe Harvester and copy that, then you, 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 you get shore up. You take six, and you have both flyers in play. And then can Nathan... Nathan, however, is one blue mana short of casting Invoke the Winds next turn. So tough choice here. Probably not taking the invoke, right? I, I think it's it's going to be between one of the two cheap spells that Julian can cast this turn. It could be that Nathan just feels that he needs to resolve invoke despair to win this game at some point, so he's going to do the best he can to clear his way for that. Yeah, however, now there's no enchantments in play. So, I mean, it's still good, yeah. but it would only just get that 2-3 off the battlefield. Right. Okay, he's got a bit of a collection of blood tokens going here. This is going to force the shore up. Now, if Julian does draw a land, he can, excuse me, uh, does draw a blue mana source, you can use Invoke the Winds and then just steal the Blood Tithe Harvester. Right, right? and that shuts off Then the all combo. of a sudden, Nathan just doesn't have any way to kill the creatures. So, so blue source, removal blue spell. Blue source, yeah. Let's see what he finds. That's, oh, a blue a source. That's an untapped blue source right that off the top a blue of the source. library. And not only that, if you do take the Blood Tithe Harvester, 
right? Mm -hmm. Even if Nathan casts the, the Invoke Despair, you don't lose any of your flyers, right? You just sacrifice the Blood Tithe Harvester. Then Nathan Sawyer is really in the red. Right. Well, because, I mean, both creatures are lethal right, right. now. We got the 4-4 four, four and the 2-3. I'm trying to figure out what Illuminator has exiled so far. Yeah, it looks I, like it's got... There's a Fading Hope on top. Mm -hmm. So it's basically exiled all the, all the cards at this point. Could cast the Fading Hope or just go with the Invoke the Winds on the Blood Tide Harvester. And I like to, if you take the reflection, you're still going to lose reflection and a creature. Excuse me, no, you can just act the reflection, right? But yeah, heads up here. Now Nathan needs to go digging. Nathan needs to find a way to deal with both flyers. That's really tough. He's down to two life here. Fable certainly isn't going to do it. That's Quarks not going to do Fraser it. Fraser not going to do it either. And, and remember, those are two sulfur springs that he has in play. Oh yeah. Right. Those are pain lands. So he's going to go digging again. I mean, even a Blood Tithe Harvester here doesn't get it done. No. And the Sulphur Spring certainly doesn't get it done. He's going to discard Corpse Appraiser. This is desperation time now for Nathan Stoyer, who finds <laughs> Infernal Grass, which <laughs> kills him just as well. All right, so that's game number one going to... Julian Wellman. Am I going to get used to saying that this weekend? I think so. I think so. I mean, this deck looks fun. It does. He, it seems well positioned, too. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it's putting up the results. And I mean, uh, I just really love kind of just taking that shell and just adding more ways to kind of make it difficult for your opponent to play around you, right? Yeah. It's not, it's, when you're playing a deck with a bunch of counter spells and you're just mono blue, it's pretty straightforward. You're like, okay, they've got some counter spells, but if I resolve a threat, I'm feeling pretty good. Here, all of a sudden, it's like, oh, well, they can kill my thing. They can do all, they, there's all these different angles of attack. And, and so far, it's been working really, really well here for Julian. This Grixis deck does get Lots of great sideboard options, right? Typically, that's what you see, right? I mean, you know, Julian Wellman's deck is is mostly blue. He does get a little bit of extra from the red. But when you have three colors spread out like this, your sideboard can be kind of whatever you want it to be. Mostly. Right, absolutely. And, and this is really where kind of those mid-range decks shine, the post-board yeah. games, right? You can really customize your deck to make sure that all your cards are just fantastic in any given matchup. Whereas when you have slightly more linear strategies, you can't really do that. It's like your deck's just doing this one thing, right? In, in, you know, in Julian's case, oftentimes it's just like trying to counter a bunch of things, protect my hottie gym. But now Nathan gets a board out, you know, cut downs that don't do a whole lot in this matchup, replace them with the rests and perhaps uh, counter spells of his own to try to fight uh, Julian's counters. And Nathan recognizing that Julian doesn't play a ton of creatures in his deck, so Corpse Appraiser also not quite as good, right? When you're playing, you know, when you're playing against the Esper deck, they have seven to nine two drops. So oftentimes the play pattern is kill your two drop, Corpse Appraiser get value. That is not how these games will play out. Right. Nathan's putting the finishing touches on sideboarding as well as Julian. I love Julian sideboard. Just one, 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 two, yeah. two. One, 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 one. <laughs> I just like seeing two Tolarian Terror up there. That's pretty good. Yeah. All right, okay. a land heavy opener here for Stoyer. Looks like a, a much more balanced draw here for Julian Wellman. The question is can Stoyer win if his first play is turn three, Fable of the Mirror Breaker? And, and the answer feels like no. Yeah, it, but the Grixis deck isn't especially aggressive, but perhaps. You know, maybe he wants to have a, a Reckoner Bankbuster in his opener. Because if you're on the play, the Mono Blue, that can't really do a whole lot. Yikes! Oh. He mulliganed into all lands. All right. All finally right. found a keeper here. Going to five here. Not a bad five. If you can find a land, right, you go Duress into Fable and Liliana. Yeah. Right? That actually could get the job done. So even though Nathan Stoyer is on five on the play, he does have some potential here. Let's see if Julian can stop him. Oh, and like, uh, I like this too, waiting under duress so that 
Julian has, you, you have an extra opportunity at nabbing a counter spell that mm -hmm. Julian could have drawn for his first turn. That's right. As it turns out, Julian did already have it in hand with the make disappear. And I imagine Nathan's only real path to victory here is resolving and sticking his three drops. So just have to take the make disappear here. Yeah, it does seem to be the case. And a consider replaces it. He's also got Rending Flame, Abraid, and Shore Up. If you're Nathan's Thoyer fan, land, land, land. He found a Shipwreck Marsh. There's a land, land, land. It even has blue. Only one unknown card there to Stoyer, so he's going to be happy to see that that is not a counter and a big nod from him. Yeah, Julian needed a red source. Unlock his hand. Found one here. Ooh. Spell Pierce could get him. That is nice. So now you can use, you can use the Abrade to get this token Goblet. off the battlefield and still have Spell Pierce up for a potential follow of Fable or Liliana. Yeah. Well, Spell Pierce is going to be a blowout here. It's a one of. <laughs> it's in the board. I mean, you know, there's no way. These Nathan, one ofs have been pretty good. Yeah, Nathan can't play around it. And curious. What does he want to get rid of here? I guess ju just he wants to be the, he wants to draw proactive threats here probably right so just getting rid of uh, the counters here and then probably just going to run something out do you want to play around spell pierce he does he does great play by nathan stoyer and remember nathan directs julian yes so he knows about a lot of the other cards he knows about all of them except for the spell pierce right <laughs> that's pretty good probably just wants to make sure that he can just keep putting some pressure on julian's life total here right Harvester, next turn you get your 2-2. There's Invoke Despair. Looks not super great here. Yeah, pretty far away from being able to cast that. Still, this Blood Tithe Harvester is ready to rumble, and if Julian wants to, he's going to have to use a real removal spell to get rid of it. The other consideration is uh, channeling the Sokins on here. Yeah, he could do that Double too. block, but then a Liliana will resolve. Right. We'll be able to nab a card. and just exist on the battlefield for a turn. And this reflection of Kikiji won't be as impressive anymore, right? Nothing right. to copy. And Julian Willman actually shakes his head there. He did not like that. Those who get in my way tend to regret it. Interesting decision point here for Nathan. It's like, my, I like my two cards. Yeah. Oh. So he's actually just going to sit on Liliana of the Veil. Facing down an opponent on four cards with the likely chance that your Liliana of the Veil could die anyway. It's a little rough to, to give up one of these two cards. He probably also feels like he's put the ball in Julian Wellman's court enough that he needs to take care of Liliana. Right. Now, Julian does have an extremely reactive hand here. Yeah. So Nathan does have some time to try to draw out of this. Yeah, particularly something at this point that could Go well. Ooh, he gets to untap here. That means that negate could come into play as an actual factor. Very awkward, though, for Nathan with the Liliana of the Veil. He draws a swamp, which he'd love to play to get Invoke Despair going. But is he just going to leave Liliana of the Veil on three forever? Well, yeah, it's it's because of the Rending Flame in Julian's hand, right? Mm -hmm. you, you, you tick it up, but you're not going to get close to being able to use the ultimate there. And so uh, is Julian also go, going... I dare you to take up the Liliana. Go for it. I have more cards than you. I can afford the pitch of land. You probably have action. Totally. Yeah. I mean, oftentimes you see a Planeswalker on the board. It's like, I need to get that off the battlefield as quickly as possible. Right. But when your opponent's not activating it. Right. You're like, <laughs> well, you know what? Maybe, maybe this is an okay <laughs> transaction for me. Yeah. Maybe you just cast three, played three mana and nothing happened. Right. <laughs> right. Like... Uh, Hadi Jin does make things more interesting here. D don't want to play it yet because there's a Liliana in play. And this is one of those instances because there are two protection spells that you can play in standard. There is Shore Up, which is the more aggressive option, but you can also play Slip Out the Back. And Slip Out the Back is a card that's significantly better against a card like Liliana. And as you can see, Julian's decided for Shore Ups. Yeah. So Negate is going to protect Liliana here. 
Okay. Xander probably Lounge. playing that out. He's just working his way up to an invoke despair. Well, cause the thing is, Nathan does, Nathan's probably just thinking, you know what, I just want to just play everything. So once I'm empty handed, then I can just start ticking up to Liliana. I don't That's care right. if you have a way to maybe kill it. He still doesn't know about the spell pierce. But he's just going to throw invoke despair as a divination of sorts, but uh, it's going to get pierced here. And then you now you might just see Liliana start ticking up here. This Rona's Vortex not doing a whole lot. Really great patience here from Nathan Stoyer. Yeah. Sitting on that Liliana for multiple turns, not activating it, and now that the the way is clear, he's going to start tearing up the hand from Julian Wellman. And this is really going to force Julian to do something. Do you, do you want to play your Hottie Jin and lose it to Liliana, or do you want to wait till I force you to discard it? Yeah. Needs to find some kind of an answer here. Ooh, okay, the so breaker. that that gets in the way of the sacrifice effect for Liliana, right? That puts an extra body onto the battlefield. It is up to four, though, so he could play this. This will cause Nathan to go minus two Liliana, but if he plays the Hadi Jin, then Nathan would lose the Liliana. Right. Okay, Nathan's going to check out his options here. Sacrifice a blood token. Maybe a Shieldred, a Fable. Corpse, Corpse appraiser. appraiser. He does have a Blood Tithe Harvester in his own yard at the very least. Right. That does change things, right? That that actually can get in the way. Now the abrade in hand will matter here, but Nathan doesn't know about it. Right. I mean, probably still going with the, the edict effect here would be my guess. Okay. It's just it's just value, right? It's like if you draw some way to get my Lily off the, off the battlefield and you don't use that minus ability, you're just not going to feel great about it. Right, so he's kind of locking in some value. Also, there's the chance that Julian Wellman attacks with his 2-2 two -two just to get the treasure. Right. He at least thus far has been stuck on just one red mana, and sometimes that can break something free. Fable's going to tick up here. Shivan Reef was the draw step there for Julian. Well, note that a braid does not... You cannot target Liliana with a braid. No. It is, as it is a... As it is an, uh, re a reprint of an older card, you know, cards were templated back then where you can't necessarily always target Planeswalkers, whereas a lot of the removal spells these days, cards like Strangle, can hit Planeswalkers. That's right. Bit of a bummer there for Julian. He actually did end up discarding two cards, but he found two lands. And now he's just trying to force the issue here, right? He just doesn't have anything else. So he goes, if you want a Liliana, go for it. But Nathan... Also with the Infernal Grasp. So now... He's got a nice backup plan here, yeah. too, yeah. You can kill the Jin, play your land, and then just start ticking up the Liliana if you want. Does he cycle Xander's Lounge? He may just have to discard the card, so I, it's, it may not matter, but maybe... Right, he maybe wants to play around a counterspell here. Right. So just ticking it up first. He's like, I don't need more than five lands in play anyways, so I'm just going to do this. And then attack for three. And next turn, Fable flips, but you can still, again, use the minus two effect on Liliana. And now, Nathan. Oh. Wow. Was that another Hottie Jin? Wow. Hottie Jin wow. off the top. Not too bad. Jeez, that's a two turn clock, and the Liliana doesn't get it done. Now, because the Fable flipped, that's going to get the reflection. And now Nathan is on a two turn clock and has to find an answer that's to the Hottie Jin. That's incredible. It is a 10 powered Hottie Jin, and there's Elder Dragon War as well. Is, is it just dragon time? It is might it just, just be. Is it just hit you for 10, make a dragon? That could possibly guard against another edith, Edict effect. Right, another like Liliana. An invoke despair or, or a Liliana, Liliana, right? right. Doing two to everything doesn't seem amazing. Right. Let's see. Let's see what Julian goes with here. Thanks to Rita Head, he can choose whichever chapter he wants to start this thing off. Yeah, he's yeah, just going for it's four, just, four flyer. Hey, look, four mana, four four. Oh, there's Shieldred, but it's That's too game. late. And Julian Wellman with a well-timed top deck of that Hottie Jin, that completely changed everything. Yeah, I mean, it looked like Nathan was able was very close 